So this is going to be a video kind of to show you how to do 3D stuff in Affinity Designer, but also as a verification tool to show everyone that the final image is actually an image. With all the AI garbage that's going on around here, uh, it's hard to differentiate sometimes. Okay, so I have just a basic circle, and what I'm wanting to do is to make a 3D image with a black background of something that looks like a planet or something like that. You just draw your basic circle and have a fill layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my quick effects and I am going to go ahead and add a 3D effect to this. Now I'm going to open up the gear box which gives me a little bit more options to work with. So I'm going to check that and we already have this going. Now with the slider you can only go up to 100 pixels radius. The highest you can go is 1024. So to make it look spherical, we're going to go the whole thing. Looks a little better. Now you can unlock these and change the depth of it. Let's say you wanted to go 500. You could have it look like that. But we're going to go what if the depth can go a little higher? Let's do 2000. Nope, 1024. So let's go ahead and relock these. Now, I do not want it to look so shiny. So we're going to end so glassy. So we're going to take this portion of it and knock it down. And the shininess will play around with that. I want a little bit of light on there. And I think that works out well. We'll change our light source. We'll leave it at 45, but we can go ahead and change the light source around. Let's have it like right there. I hate the fact that it has this indentation on here. And there's really not much that we can do over on the parameters to be able to change that because you can't change this. If I go to one, 1050, it's just going to keep it at 1024. So there's a little bit of limitation with this. In any event, what you're going to want to do is take note of these numbers here because it's going to come into play whenever we work with putting texture with our uh, paintbrush under the pixel persona. I'm going to go back. I'm going to copy these numbers. And of course, you can knock off the degrees, but I've got everything on there, so I might as well just keep it. Let's go ahead and do that. Now, I'm going to close this out. For right now, this is fine where I want it. Now, what you're going to go into, and of course, Everyone's going to look a little bit different. I'm going to go into the pixel persona and work with my brushes. So I am going to choose my brush tool. There we go. And I am going to go into my brush area. And I'm not going to do engraving. And I know that if you're working with the basics of uh, Affinity Designer, you're not going to see nearly as many brushes, or you may even see more. But I'm just going to go ahead and um, choose a pair that works. Let's work with this one. Uh, change my pixels, go a little bit higher, get a little bit of a bigger brush head. And let's change this to more of a brown. Okay. And I'm just doing this as an experiment to sort of show you what you can do with it. Now, right now, you could stop. And, you know, it looks like something on top of a sphere, like it's painted. Literally, it is. But what you need to do is go and make sure that you have your pixel layer selected. Go back under the quick FX. Now, you cannot use 3D. Well, I guess you can. It just depends on what style you want. 
but if you go ahead and tick on the 3D option, open up your gearbox, I'll show you what it looks like. Let's go ahead and do that. You're gonna have the whole brushes looking like the whole thing is in a 3D layer. Now we can change these to where the light will, will match this, but I want to show you, see the whole thing is there. Now I want these individual layers to go ahead and have like their own individual 3D. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I wanna get back in my brushes again. We're gonna go ahead and do a little bit more scraping around this. Really fill it up, but not to a gross degree. Okay, so what you're going to do to get the individual 3D effects first, untick that, <laughs> now you're going to go to bevel. You're going to have to open up your gearbox for this. Sometimes that'll tick back on. But I want my radius, I want to go ahead and up my radius quite a bit. Now you can already see that it's having an effect on the individual layers or individual little brush details that are there. You can see it looks a lot better. But the way that the bevel is in default is that it carves into the surface. It makes it look like the paintbrush is carved into it. Now I don't want that. I want it looking like mountains. So we're gonna open up this gear again. I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna up this a little bit. Let's do that. And yeah, there, there we go. We'll keep our bevel stuff there. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna to go to the highlight and shadow. And we notice that the blend mode, they've got the highlight on as screen and they've got the shadow as multiply. Now I want to keep these blend modes because they look good, but they're just in the wrong spots. So what I want to do is I want to swap out the color. We're going to go from white to black, and we're going to go to multiply. Multiply, multiply, there we go. And then we're going to go down here and change the black to white. And we're going to change the blend layer. I should have done that whenever I was there. To screen. Okay, so that's the first part of it. If we were to zoom in, we're seeing that it looks more like peaks rather than just there. Now the light source is in a different spot. If you zoom in, you can see that the light source is facing into the upper left hand corner. But if we look at our globe, our light source is down in sort of the lower center portion of this. So this is where our numbers that we put in start coming back into play. So we're just going to need the number, not necessarily degree, negative 177.8. And then we're going to go ahead and do a 52.3. Go ahead and establish that. Now, now if we zoom in, everything looks good. The shadows and everything are in their right spot. Now, now this works if you're wanting to create texture on an object that you've created to a 3D style, okay? Now, the advantage of doing this is that you are going to be able to rotate this object. Let me zoom out here a little bit. You're going to be able to rotate it because you've used the effects, and the effect is going to hold no matter where you rotate it. So if you wanted to create something that has an asset, 
it's going to work out for you. Notice how the shadows are moving. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Let's zoom back out. Oops, sorry about that. Zoom back out. Notice how the shadows are moving where we have it, just exactly as it would. Now, to me, the paint brushes look, well, they're a little bit harsh. So if we were looking at this from orbit, it's just too much detail. So what we're gonna do is make sure that the brushes are there. We're gonna add a Gaussian blur to this. Now there, you don't have to worry about the gearbox for this one because there's not much of an option or not many options with a blur. And just add a little bit of a blur. And we're gonna do the same thing with the ellipse, the globe. We're gonna add a Gaussian blur. It's gonna add it to the whole layer, and that's fine. Let's see if we can go back to our layer and fix this. I think that'll work. Yes, because the, the pixel layer is the child layer within the ellipse. So whenever we added the Gaussian blur to it, it's going to add even more so to it. So let's go ahead and go back down. Change that out. I'd say that's about enough. Let's go ahead and zoom back out. There we go. Now you can go back in, you know, it's, I had it zoomed out. It's pretty bare on the bottom there. And you can go ahead and change the size of that pixel layer. And the nice thing about the pixel layer is that it'll stay within your whole deal. Let's get out of that. And now we have a 3D textured orb that looks pretty decent. All from an Illustrator program that is basically two-dimensional, supposedly. I mean, and you can do, you can do lots of 3D related stuff. To affinity, I, I like the fact that within a 2D program, it allows you to be able to do a 3D effect. You can change your light source, you can add lighting sources, everything that's there. And I know that some people would say, well, why don't you just get a, a 3D program to be able to do that stuff? Well, my thing is I have more options with regard to brushes on that. Why would I want to do that? It's It works just fine for me. And... I have more option with brushes. I have more options with um, things that I can do. And plus, I think better with a two-dimensional program. Okay. So that right there looks good. So whenever you're working with your brushes, what you're going to have to keep in mind is you want to use the bevel effect to give it texture. And whether you want it to look like the texture is going into the um, into the uh, object that you want or out of the object to want to stand out, you have to flip your... Let's get back in here. You have to flip your highlight and shadow coloring around change it from white to black, from, from black to white, or change it whatever you want to. And then you're gonna to have to change also your blend layers on each one of these. Now, this one works fine for me, but you, you could, around this area where it looks like the light source is hitting first, you could do another brush, another pixel layer, 
and um, set it to where the angle works with the light source. But for me and with this one, this works just fine and I'm perfectly satisfied with it. And I hope this helps people uh, who have Affinity Designer to be able to create something, um, you know, to create something in 3D. Um, this works for any type of brush, for any type of uh, shape that you do. You can you can make it that way, uh, change the shininess, change and have multiple light sources uh, going on. Um, in fact, let's do this. Let's add another light source to this. And we're going to go ahead and do this to the ellipse. Open up our gearbox. And we're going to add a light source. So this is two. And I want my light source to have a little bit more of a purple. A little bit of a deeper purple to it. And... Eh, nah, the heck with it. And it's just as easy to remove it. Just remove, and that's it. Okay, that's it. I hope that this helps you. And, um, yeah, it, it's pretty cool what you can do with Affinity Designer. And it's a program that um, you can pay for it once, and it's yours. I paid $49.99 for it. Actually, I paid $99.99 to get that Affinity Photo and Affinity Publisher, I believe. Um which works well together and um i hope that this helps some of you later